what do you want to know? <laughs> it's such a broad question. My character lives in Midnight, Texas. <laughs> Creepy. Well, I was a creepy. I was creepy. Yeah, very creepy and stoic for a long time. I like but Bobo, Paul. he is not creepy at all. No, he's I'm just delicious. I am positive he's not creepy. He hides his 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 hurt in, in sad eyes, but he masks it with a big smile. Yeah. So how can you go wrong with that, right? <laughs> so Bobo and Fiji are best friends, and Fiji's like you know has this uh, huge, huge love for him. And that he's he just an idiot that doesn't recognize it. Yeah. He is yeah. well, okay, a little bit, but Olivia's. also like Fiji. Really, but you find out why. for a very, 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 very important reason. Fiji cannot disclose her feelings for him. Like it's really important that mm -hmm. she doesn't. So. Um, You'll you'll see why that is, and um, but it was yeah. a, it's such a fun friendship uh, to explore throughout the series. Yeah, between the yeah, so we had so much fun working and like and and uh, you know for the characters like any any friendship that's worth its salt, it's gonna go through hard times and sweet times, and and you definitely see our friendship move through through Those the different hard things, times, supporting each other. Yeah, it might have something to do with that that cellar, uh, you know, or it could Maybe. have something to do with the thing why she can't express her love for me. Maybe? So, yeah. Yeah. Or it could have something to do with my past. It could. Yeah. No, you know what, it's just, he's just not handsome enough for me, so I, didn't, I just feel like pulling the trigger on it, wow, you wow. know. <laughs> not. <laughs> no, um. She liked my belt buckles. I like this belt Bobo buckles. Bobo wears very big belt buckles as the season progresses. He's such so. a good country boy. <laughs> he's such a good, I mean, who doesn't love a country boy? I'm sorry. Who can run fast in cowboy boots. Like, when Fiji's like, <laughs> Sorry, we'd be in scenes, and I'm like, how did he just do that? Because we were working 18-hour like, days, and I didn't get my exercise in, so I was like, i got to run fast yeah, in these boots. But it's like, you're like not, you don't look like a real person. I, I run like, kind of like, silly, though. It, no, I run bow legged. No, not you run silly. You run so like fast, this. it doesn't look real. Well, thank you. She's it's, being very It's kind. freakishly amazing. Well, you were in trouble. I, I had to put the afterburners on. Aww. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Creek doesn't have any powers, but she does have some secrets and some things that she's going to have to learn. And she grew up in Midnight, Texas. She's been there since she was a kid. Um, and she's the youngest person in town except for her little brother. So this is really, this community is really like her family. And even though she's not exactly like them, she's still one of them in her own way. And she's going to even learn even more so how that's true. Uh, we will learn, um, the thing about each of the Midnighters is they all have a dark past, they all have a lot of secrets, and as the season goes on, we'll learn more and more about their backstories. Um, and with Olivia, she's had a really traumatic childhood, and it's part of what has made her not only who she is today with her anger issues, but also why she's chosen uh, to be a hit woman. And um, I hope that with each of these characters, as you learn about their past, that it adds more compassion um, to them, because I think that's a really important message in today's world. You know, like, you might think you know who they are on the outside, but there's so much more. That's a great message in today's world. The what? That's a great message in today's world. Yeah. The book had some great things in it, um, but I also looked into other things. I got to meet the pagan community where we were shooting, um, and they were very, very helpful. I mean, that world brings in a lot of different things, and there's, you know, one one thing that I kept hearing was, like, there are no two Wiccans that are alike, there are no two pagans that are alike, and I think Fiji's really, a, she's an individual, and she's willing to pull from different places, and she really feels like science and magic are the same thing, so um, so I was, I, I was able to to just pull in information from you. He talked to God. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did a lot of meditating. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was first reading the book and the script and taking the information I knew at hand and trying to honor where the story wanted to go. Um, I literally took one of those evolution uh, graphs where it's like, you know, here's the Big Bang and here's man's human history and I just sort of started picking out really salient events from that. And then I started filling in stories of where my journey might have gone to uh, put me in the mindset that I was in Midnight, Texas. 
what had I gone through over all these years to make me want to hide from society, but to leave me in a place that my character is. I'm, you know, I certainly think I had a great period of disillusionment. Um, I'm more hopeful now in this this time, and and part of that's the characters that I interact with in Midnight. Uh, lots of rock climbing and gymming and yeah, being tired and getting up. They were always rock climbing. Yeah. Every, every weekend in New Mexico, they were rock climbing. Oh God, it is actually true. So every, I think everybody abs. has abs. <laughs> I don't know what it is. It, yeah, like, yeah. Peter Mensa As a is fan, ripped. Lamel. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many handsome But there's beautiful. There's the every I'm one not of looking at them, though. Okay. I'm just saying. Right, like, the, right. the dudes on the show all are right. hot. Um, we all have dad bod, actually. Don't watch. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was in like two to three hours of training a day, so I would do st um, stunt training, fight choreography, weapon training, um, and it was amazing. It was so intense. I mean, I grew up doing sports, but this was nothing like my childhood. Um, and uh, also, we filmed in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and what I didn't know, and what a lot of us didn't know until we learned on the pilot, is it's 6,000 feet in the air, and it's the desert. So you're dealing with a crazy altitude change. And so I remember the first day he was having me jump rope for 30 seconds. And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> I was like, I sound like a donkey. Um, uh, but so my lungs really had to adjust. And the, so my learning curve with this character was like, I had to take such good care of myself and like be gentle with myself. And I was taking ice baths and salt baths and, because it was just like, I think the climate added a certain level of intensity that I was oh. never expecting. And so much environmental, like it's dry, it's cold. It's, it's windy, there's ice, there's yeah. snow, there's, it was like really Poor intense. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and then John Koyamo, who is my, um, my everything, my like stunt fight square for guru, he would just push me and push me and push me. And there was days I really wanted to cry, but I was so happy he pushed me. I think the rest of this season, I think there's a definitely, definitely a bit of a left turn after the pilot. The pilot's sweet and and, and, and a little more whimsical and less dark, I think, than what you can expect uh, further in. Um, I mean, there are some... We were adamant to make the, the whole, like, possession scenes quite um, look quite physically painful, and so there's more of that. Um, I wouldn't say that it goes into gory territory, but it definitely gets bloody um, and it tense, weird. and it gets weird, yeah. It gets, like, disturbing. We were talking about that Francois Mamford later on, things happen to him, and Francois has to put in, like, contacts and get face makeup done, and he would send me pictures, and I would be like, ugh, like, please don't send me that. I'm, like, upset and, like, worried now and a little scared. And there's yeah. definitely, like, a, a demonic aspect to it. Um, also, oh, yeah. I don't know if I'm allowed to, to say that, actually, but that, like every yeah. episode is sort of built like a chapter of a book. I mean, not of the book. It's, a, it's There are different chapters, not chapters <laughs> from the Charlene's books, but um, that, that sort of um, explores the background of, of one of the main characters and how, how Manfred interacts with... How Manfred saves the day. How Manfred saves the day. Yeah, we know. Um, um, um. I'm just kidding. But, yeah, and, and you're right. Good good bringing that up. Also, there's a new monster in every episode. Yes, but, yeah. I think we're allowed to say that. We're allowed to say that? But, yeah. but Yes, but but it's always character-driven. It's not like a necessarily the monster of the week. No, but there's, always, there's a lot of there's scares. Always, yeah. There's, a, there's a new... True evil being arriving every week. But like there's a whole episode that goes back to um, is, is it uh, to, not, to the 19th century um, mm -hmm. for Lem's past for, for Lem's past because he's a vampire and he's been alive forever. Um, it's really good. It's really good, yeah. Uh, I'm a comic book geek from way back uh, and the reason I always <laughs> loved Supernatural is it takes all the rules and throws them out the door. And then what you create from there is what you create from there. So you know, we can have a world full of supernatural creatures and still explore humanity through it. You know, it's it gives you a license to write stories that are not limited to what we already know. 
Uh, Midnight Texas is hot and steamy like any other Charlene Harris novel is. We've got supernatural elements that will blow your mind and then we have the sweet relationships that will ground it in reality and make people fall in love with this show. Yeah. yeah. We're not a vampire show. We have a vampire in our show. We have a bunch of supernaturals and what is our external forces is very different than what True Blood's external forces are. You know, we are a family, essentially a gathered family, and we are protecting our way of life. And I think that's a different message altogether. Uh, and something, honestly, as a storyteller that I love being a part of, because I think that's one of the really, really amazing parts of stories. You know, if you're sitting alone in your room, which I did a lot as a kid, and knowing that, oh, wait a second, I'm not alone. And just because I feel like a freak, hey, this guy's a freak too, and he's pretty damn cool. It's inspiring. Yeah. So I think the fans it's won't have to trouble be a with that at all. Weirdos are the coolest, man. Oh, it's so cool. He's got to do all the stuff this time. I don't have the eyes. I don't have the fangs. It's great. Um, you know, I, I'm so... Long live Lexi. I'm so grateful for the Vampire Diaries and the family that they gifted me with by being a part of that show. Um, and uh, on this show, I felt like I understood so much about Lem because of Lexi and what I had done. But that was like my real life story that I translated to the Olivia Lim story because Olivia knows so much about Lim which is why they have this deep relationship that they do because so much of their interactions it goes it's like unspoken dialogue between them and so I just kind of used my real life experience and translated that into like the Lemon Olivia world uh, just because you don't fit the zeitgeist that somebody else is pushing in the media or in your immediate circumstances doesn't mean that you don't matter and you know, we definitely are a collection of, you know, what would be termed as freaks. I think we're even called that a few times during the course of the show. And I don't think that anybody on this planet doesn't deserve a space. You know, we all do. And right now, <laughs> what's going on in the world right now, without being too specific, I think it's pretty great to put that message back into the world. I, I don't know where we got so lost with the idea that people matter and everybody matters. Some yeah, to me, I think it's we're diverse and we stand up for each other. It's all of the things that you ever wanted from from a genre show, with a, I think a, an even heavier dose of the reality, the the love, the loss, and the horror. And it's the, dark. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I it's mean, dark, man. It's yeah. scary. You go to weird places. I would scream sometimes reading reading the script. Yeah. Like multiple times reading. The Aesthetically, script. it's dark. Yeah, and, it, it's and we really deal with the some of the the real pains of life and and seeing how family the family that you make can help you and the social issues that. that we're all dealing with right now is there's some of that incorporated into there's so much well. monica yeah. monica brain um the showrunner says it's like all of her favorite genre elements in a blender mm -hmm. and i really it's like everything you want a gentleman a from the ap said it was like a jj abrams shonda rhimes mashup yeah. so I don't think uh, I don't think the praise gets higher than that. No. <laughs>